getting to know art media. Painting media. Painting tools and materials. To get ready to paint, here are some things that you might need. Painting is messier than drawing, so you might need an apron or paint smock to keep from getting all messy. You'll need a place to paint. You can paint almost anywhere, inside or outside. as long as you make sure you find a place where mess won't matter. If you have a special place that's just for painting, that is called a studio. You'll also need something to paint on. The actual material or surface that you paint on is called a support. There are many different kinds of supports, like paper, which you can tack up on a wall to paint large projects, or you could put your paper on a table to paint smaller projects. This woman is painting on a canvas which is a strong cloth stretched over a wooden frame. Her canvas is on an easel. Easels can hold a canvas or a board in an upright position while you paint on it. Another type of support is wood or any board. Canvases and boards need to be covered with a primer to seal them, and it helps the paint to stay on. Gesso is a common primer. Of course you can paint on walls too. This is called a mural. You can even put your support on the floor, where you can drip or spatter your paint. You'll need something to put the paint on with. Brushes or other painting tools. A brush is a painting tool with bristles, and it has three parts. The bristles, the handle, and the ferrule, which is often metal and holds the bristles onto the handle. Bristles can be made of soft or stiff materials. Bristles can be made from natural hair from an animal, like camel hair, goat hair, rabbit hair, and even horse hair, or from synthetic or man-made materials like nylon or polyester. Brushes come in many shapes and sizes, depending on how the artist plans to use them in a painting. There are tiny brushes for detail work giant brushes to cover big areas. There are round and pointed brushes, flat and square brushes, and lots of others. Artists sometimes use a tool called a palette knife to mix colors or even to paint with. You can paint with other things besides brushes and palette knives, including fingers and toes, sponges, feathers, sticks, strings or yarn, cotton balls and Q-tips, 
toothbrushes, eyedroppers, straws, and many, many more. You can also stamp with objects using sponges, stamps, corks, pieces of wood, and fruits or vegetables. You'll probably need water or something to thin your paint. Maybe some paper towels or rags to clean up spills. You'll also need a palette or mix tray for mixing colors. You can use lots of different things as palettes. Heavy paper, wax paper, plastic containers or lids, recycled aluminum containers, and boards. If your paint can't be saved, wash or wipe your palette. You can paint on all kinds of objects. You might want to visit an art supply store. Look around to see all the wonderful choices for painting tools and materials. And remember to take good care of your painting tools and materials. Remember to wash your brushes, wash your palettes, and make sure all of your paint containers are closed up tight. If you keep your materials clean and properly stored, they'll last for much longer. So don't forget cleanup! Watercolor and ink. When watercolor paints are mixed with water, they start to flow, so you can paint with them. Watercolors can come in semi-moist cakes, in tubes, or even bottles with eyedroppers. Watercolors are unique or special because they are not too expensive, they're easy to carry with you, watercolors dry quickly compared to oil paints, and they are transparent. When we say watercolors are transparent, that means they let the white paper show through. True watercolor sets don't have a color white. The white of the paper is used to get the color white. So for example, to mix pink, you'd use a very watery red. The white of the paper showing through makes the watery red work as pink. The more water you add to the paint, the more transparent it becomes. Watercolors can be applied in transparent layers or washes to make beautiful effects. Watercolor paper often has a slightly bumpy texture, which helps absorb the water and adds interest to the painting. When mixing colors, be sure to keep your cakes clean Use a mixing tray and rinse the brush in water between colors. Then your colors will stay true and not muddy. For very free effects, try painting on wet paper. The paint colors will flow into each other or bleed. To create detailed effects and textures, use a drier brush. To mop up a puddle or spill, use a completely clean and dry brush. You can draw heavily in crayon and paint over the drawing with watercolors. This is called a crayon resist because the wax in the crayons resists or pushes away the water. The effect is very cool. Here is a watercolor by the famous artist John Marin. It has a quick, fresh feeling. You might want to try ink painting too. 
Like watercolors, ink is a pigment mixed with a liquid to make it flow. Ink is actually not paint, but it is used in much the same way as watercolor paint. Ink painting is thousands of years old. There is beautiful artwork in ink from all over the world, notably from Asia, which can include a way of writing which comes from pictures called calligraphy. Artworks in ink can include drawing and painting. Asian style painting subjects are often from nature. This ink painting of grasses is simple and full of movement. These horses are painted with quick, lively ink brush strokes. Like watercolor paint, ink can be mixed with water to create ink washes. An ink wash is lighter than ink alone. And the more water you add, the lighter it becomes. Here is an ink painting by the famous artist Rembrandt. See how he used small brushes for lines and details, and larger brushes and ink washes for shading and texture. You can use ink on wet paper for very free effects. Artists sometimes use ink and watercolor together because of their similarities, as in this painting. Tempera. Tempera paint is one of the oldest kinds of paint known to man. Many medieval and Renaissance master artists use tempera as their medium of choice. Hundreds of years ago, egg yolk was mixed with pigment to create egg tempera and was often painted on wood. Now tempera paint is created with pigment and a variety of materials, which can come as a thick liquid in jars or even gallon jugs. Tempera can also come in cakes, like watercolors. Tempera paint is often used in schools, where it is also called poster paint. You thin tempera with water, just like watercolors. But unlike watercolors, they can be opaque, which means you can't see the paper through them. You can mix all sorts of great colors with tempera paints.
So you can see that even though tempera paint is one of the oldest paints, it is still easy and fun to use. Older students, adults, and professional artists may use other paints in addition to watercolors, inks, and tempera paints. Two of the other types of paints they may use are acrylics and oils. Both acrylics and oils often come in tubes. Oil paints thin with oil and turpentine. Acrylics thin with water. They can both be used in a thin glaze or a thick impasto. Acrylics are really a kind of plastic and will harden on brushes and palettes. Acrylics dry more quickly than oils and generally cost less. Many house paints are acrylic or latex, which is similar. There are other kinds of paints as well. There are enamel paints, which are especially hard drying and permanent oil-based paints. There are also encaustic paints, which is a way of painting with hot wax. All these paints can be used on many surfaces and supports. Acrylic and oil painting are often done on stretched canvases or on hard boards. Many paintings in museums are oil paintings or acrylic paintings. Here is a self-portrait by Vincent van Gogh in oil paint, showing himself with his easel and palette. Here is a work by the French painter Claude Monet, it is a wall-sized oil painting of water lilies on a pond. This is a photograph of Monet in his studio, with one of several paintings he did of water lilies. Look at the huge palette he is holding! Do you know any artists who work in oils or acrylic paints? Looking at paintings. It is always fun and educational to visit art museums or galleries. You can check out what famous artists have done with their painting media. Or you can get ideas for your own painting projects. When you look at paintings, ask yourself questions. What is the subject of the painting? Sometimes that is easy to answer, as the subject of this painting is the sunflowers. The subject of this painting is the person. The subject of this painting is a winter landscape. The trees have no leaves. The houses have snow on the roofs. And there are people playing on the frozen water. The subject of this painting is a summer landscape. There is a man standing in the field, a sunny farmhouse in the distance, 
the trees and plants are in full bloom. If you aren't sure what the subject of the painting is, look for clues. Sometimes, with an abstract painting, the title will give a clue. This painting is titled, Landscape with Houses. What story does the painting tell? What story could this painting be telling? These children are holding hands and running, but what are they doing? Are they playing a game? The title of this painting is Crack the Whip. Does that give you a clue? What is the mood or feeling of the painting? Color and shape are some of the many things that help create the mood. What mood do you feel from looking at this abstract painting of circle forms? What is the mood in this painting of a girl standing in a doorway? How does it make you feel? What did the artist like about the subject? Maybe this artist loved the bright colors of the parrots. He repeated several birds to create a rhythm or pattern. Edgar Degas loved to paint ballet dancers because of their graceful movement and their beautiful costumes. How is the paint used? It is also fun to look at how the paint was used. In thickly painted works, the brush strokes show giving the painting texture. In thinly glazed paintings, the brush strokes can be almost invisible. How is light used in the painting? Is there strong light and dark with shadow? or a more even or flat light. Or really bright light. How is space used in the painting? In the background of da Vinci's famous portrait called Mona Lisa, we see a magical landscape that seems to stretch far into the distance. This gives the painting a feeling of depth. In this painting, called Table with Guitar, the space is very flat, with bright shapes and colors that seem to sit on the surface of the canvas, like paper cutouts. What is the composition of the painting? The composition of a painting is the way everything about the painting works as a whole. In this portrait by Cezanne, much of the painting is blue. The books on the table stand out in white. And like stepping stones, they lead our attention from the bottom of the canvas, up to the hands, and eventually to the face of the man at his desk. In this painting by Edgar Degas, the composition grabs our interest by giving us a pattern to enjoy. 
two dancers with the same pose. More dancers form a background pattern of graceful dancers' arms and legs. You can use your imagination when looking at paintings. It's fun to imagine you are in the painting. What would you hear? Smell. Is it cold? Or warm? When looking at paintings, look for subject, story, mood or feeling, and the artist's interest. How is the paint used? How is the light used? How is the space created? And what is the composition? Enjoy looking at paintings whenever you can. It's an adventure.